So here are the rules. An anti-clockwise turn of the Allen key, and I only do this in quarter turns at a time, sometimes less than a quarter, will give you more relief. It will give you more of the curve, bringing more of the string above the frets. If you turn the Allen key clockwise, it will go the other way, so that the string will come down to the frets, the neck will straighten out and eventually get a back bow. Now, you can adjust this in quite an extreme manner, so that's why I'm saying go slowly. But don't be afraid. Just give it a quarter turn like that. Now, I did that quite fast because I've been adjusting truss rods for bloody ages, and I just did about four of my guitars in a row. But you can just adjust it a tiny turn. I'll do that in front of the camera so you can see it work. So here's my Allen key, and you can just go wah, and it's fine. That's enough. Leave it for 10 minutes, tune it up, take a look, see how it feels. So you've adjusted the truss rod, You've tuned it back up, you've taken a look, has it changed the neck? Take a look again, have a feel, have a play. It's all about how it feels to you, not to someone else. That's why I set up my own guitars. If it hasn't had enough effect, do some more. Go a quarter turn at a time, never go more than a quarter turn, because sometimes that tiny adjustment of the truss can make a big change, but you won't see that change immediately. It takes time for the wood of the neck to adjust to the truss. So basically you want the neck almost perfectly straight, but with a tiny bit of curve to it, just a tiny bit of up relief in the neck. And only once you've adjusted the truss and the neck is looking good, then you can adjust the action of the strings. A lot of people jump straight to the action when actually the neck isn't right. That's like, you know, trying to look after a tree and doctoring the branches when the roots are knackered. <laughs> Got to look after the root of your guitar, which is the neck. And by the way, while I'm here, best tuner I've ever used is this little Planet Waves thing, man. They're awesome. Check that out. They really are good. This isn't me selling something to you. This is just my honest advice. Um, I just love this little tuner. You clip it on. There it is. It's done and dusted. You haven't got to plug something in. You haven't got to wait for it to load up. It just, it's just instant. Do you know what I mean? And when I'm adjusting things like truss rods and action and stuff, I always have this clipped on. Just the action, because as soon as you change the action, the tuning changes. So it's good just to have one of these on airstock. In fact, I may even super glue one of these to each of my Chapman guitars. While we're discussing tuning, a really good tip for people who buy an ML1, or any guitar for that matter, and they're finding that the tuning of the guitar uh, is sticking, it isn't, it isn't uh, adjusting in real time to you tuning the pegs, take a look at two things. Take a look at the nut of your guitar, and take a look at the way these strings are being pulled down over the nut. For example, some guitars come with these string trees, some guitars come with a retainer bar, like on my ML1 number one. This has got a retaining bar here. We'll bow to number one. Ah. Um, so the thing is, generally these guitars come with the trees or the retaining bar right down to the, the wood, and the pressure over that is too extreme. It really doesn't take a lot of pressure to keep a string in a nut, unless you're doing three-tone bends, or something crazy like that. So what I do, what I did when I got my three ML1s, is I slightly unscrewed the string trees and the uh, bars just to give a little bit less pressure over the nut. And I recommend you do the same. Um, basically, they come screwed down because it feels nice to screw something straight in, doesn't it? But you don't have to. It's something that you can adjust just like the action of the truss rod. So put your screwdriver in here, undo it about two turns and give it a little bit less relief over the nut. I'll show you what I mean close up. So here's the nut, here's the string tree, and you can see the angle between here. Now if I had that screwed all the way down it would be even more acute. You can have it pretty much straight to here and it'll be completely fine. So relieving string trees is a good thing. Uh, also lubing your nut is a good thing and there are lots of things you can get for that including pencil lead which is practically free if you own a pencil. So action. Everyone likes to talk about changing their action because it's the one sort of immediately obvious safe thing guitar players think they can do. Uh, like I said, it's I think pretty much the third thing you should do. String your guitar, tune it, check the truss rod, then go to the action. So here's the Allen key that comes with the M01 for adjusting your action. It's very, very simple. Uh, you've got each of these little saddles. They all have tiny little holes. You put the Allen key in and you give them a tweak one way or the other. It goes up or it goes down. Now here's the thing you really want to adjust it as low as you can if you like a low action. Because I like a high action. Um, I don't like the feel of a low action. In fact, you'll find low actions give you very little bass tonality from your guitar. 
the string hasn't got the freedom to move and vibrate in that circular pattern to give the bass resonance and tones. So I like a high action. If you really like a low action, adjust it as low as you can until it begins to buzz. When it buzzes out, bring it up one whole turn. That should be pretty much perfect. So here's my uh, beautiful Wilkinson Trem. Here's the Allen key. You just simply turn it left or right. It goes up or it goes down. You have to do both to keep them even. Quick note about the tremolo. This is a really, really good tremolo. It retails at £40 if you buy it on your own. These saddles do not move left and right like a traditional F-type tremolo system. They're captured in by these sides. Um, the trem bar pushes in place. It doesn't screw in. There's no thread on the tremolo for the ML1. Once you've adjusted the saddles, take a look down the neck and see if they follow the radius of the neck. It's a 10 radius, so it's really, really flat. It's, it's very, very slightly curved, but not a lot. So this doesn't want to be massively curved. You may want to bring up the E string ever so slightly higher than the others, which is what I do, if you drop D. Because when you drop D the string, you're slacking it off. Sometimes you get a little bit of buzz. So bring the E string saddle a little bit higher than the rest. So you've adjusted the truss rod, you've taken a look at the string trees to relieve the pressure over the nut if you need to. Um, again, really varies on the type and the gauge of string that you're using because if you're using 12 gauges uh, in drop D or 9s in standard, the neck's going to be a whole different story each time. Uh, then you've done the action, now what are you going to do? Play the guitar, tune it and play it, and play it for a good time, play it for an hour, see how it feels. You're looking for that feel, you know when everything just feels perfect when you're like completely part of the guitar, when you almost forget the guitar's there, that's what I call a setup. The setup is not when it's like, yeah, it feels good, it look, looks like a low action, therefore it must be good. That isn't what a setup is, man. That's what people imagine setups to be. Let's take a talk about tightening things, shall we? I get endless students turning up to me with loose volume pots and loose inputs and tone pots. It does my head in. It's such a simple thing to do. Uh, with the ML1, the volume and the tone pot don't have a screw holding them in place. So you have to pull them off. Now they're quite tight. So what you want to do is get a bit of cloth or a bit of tissue paper and a spoon or a screwdriver and just angle it off. It just comes off, just takes a bit of time. Pull it off. Once it's off, get yourself some Loctite, Loctite, or an equivalent. 